All right, in this vlog, we'll take a look back at what's been going on since the last one, and I'll also take a look ahead at what I plan to be working on over the next month or two. Okay, welcome to my second vlog. First thing I'll do, uh, we'll talk about here is things that have been going on since my last vlog. A couple of videos I've made. One was about the Exact 90 miter gauge from Woodpeckers. A little bit about putting that together. Probably at least half the video was talking about the process I went through to calibrate it using the five cut method and doing that several times and, and doing the calculations and just kind of stepping through that process. And then I also did a video about my uh, downdraft table. Somebody in a comment from my shop tour had asked about that. So I did a video about the downdraft table and just talked about um, why I built it and how I built it and uh, a little bit about the design, looked at a SketchUp drawing that I did to, to show how it was built. Another uh, project that I didn't think about during my last vlog that um, didn't mention but came up in the, in the time since then and I've actually built two of these as a lithophane light box. So if you're not familiar with what a lithophane is, you can look it up, Google it, but it's basically an image that is sort of imprinted into a thin solid material and such that when a light is placed behind the lithophane, the image is shown clearly through the lithophane. It, it creates a pretty interesting and neat effect in how the image is, is displayed. And so these boxes, the idea came from my son. He had this idea to create one of these as a gift for his girlfriend. Um, he's been into 3D printing for several years, and so he knew that he could 3D print the lithophane panels themselves and wanted to know if I could build a box that would house the panels and have a light in the inside and the box could spin and, and it would light them. And so, so together we worked on it and um, built one and we gave it to her and then since then, I've also built another one that I sold that's going to be given as a retirement gift for a doctor. And I think I've got a, a there's a potential I'll be making a few more of those in the near future. So I also did a two-part video series on, on the design of it and, and how I built it. And I thought the videos came out pretty good, but for whatever reason, they haven't really done too well on YouTube in terms of views. Uh, but if you're interested, they're on my channel. So another big thing that came up since the vlog that uh, really doesn't have a lot to do with my anything to do with my shop other than it's taken a lot of my time is I spent a good bit of time working on my front door to our house. Uh, it, it had a it was finished with a gel stain and it just did not stand up well to the sun and so it was peeling really really badly. I would occasionally sand it off a little bit just to get the bad flakes off but I had known for a long time that it needed to be refinished. And it just took way longer than I thought it was going to. It took me several days to get it all sanded down bare. And then it was two coats of primer and three coats of paint. And just it's taken up a lot of my time over the last couple of weeks in particular. Um, which kind of brings me to my what I like to jokingly refer to as my two laws of do-it-yourself or home improvement. And those are uh, nothing is truly square, uh, especially when you're dealing with stuff around your house. And the second one is everything takes longer than you think it's going to. Uh, and oftentimes, the, it's the first rule that leads into the second rule. From the last vlog, I talked about some upcoming projects, and the next uh, big one that I'm doing for a client is this corner hutch. It took longer than I had anticipated to get the final details all nailed down, but that has been done since the last vlog. The client's very happy with how they, how, what the design looks like, hashed out all the details and exactly how they wanted the doors done and, and uh, the hardware and things like that. And I've gotten a deposit on it of half of the, the cost that I proposed to them. They were, they were fine with the cost. They paid me half. And I uh, acquired almost all the materials. There's a few things that are on order that haven't come in yet. But I have all the wood. So I'm going to be starting that probably tomorrow. I do plan on making a video series out of that. I'll probably start with a video looking at the like a screencast video looking at the design in Fusion 360 and just kind of going through how I designed it and what my plans are for building it. And then I'll video the process of, of building the hutch and it'll be a multi-part, I'm not sure how many parts, but uh, several parts probably because it's a fairly large project of building that project. One of the things I'm waiting to get is the hinges. Um, it turned out that the exact combination of hinges that we had decided on 
when I went to go buy them, I couldn't find that specific combination, basically because the style of hinge they wanted, I couldn't find in a black finish and they wanted black hardware. But I was able to find that style from Rockler in an oil rubbed bronze. In my experience, oil rubbed bronze can mean a lot of different things depending on who makes it. In this particular case, this oil rubbed bronze hinge is very dark. I mean, it, and the picture on the Rockler website makes it look almost black. So I've ordered those hinges. The client said they look like they would be fine. And when I get them in and I confirm exactly what they look like, that they really are really dark because what they're looking for is black or almost black, then I'll, I'll get knobs to match. They just want simple uh, knobs. So I'll either get some really dark oil rub bronze knobs that match or a flat black knob. So some of the internal panels, back panels and stuff like that will be plywood. A lot of the, the boards on the that face outward on the front will, will are going to be uh, red oak. Instead of buying a bunch of lumber at the hardwood store and milling it, I'm using red oak, uh, that like four-sided surfaced lumber that's available at Home Depot in various one by, and they have a one by two, one by three, four, six. I think it goes all the way up to one by 12 in various increments. And then of course, that's the nominal size so for instance, a one by three is actually three quarters by two and a half. Um, and so I've decided to use that because for a couple of different reasons. One, I think it'll end up saving the customer a decent amount of uh, money because I won't have to spend the time milling a lot of lumber. And this, based on the design that we came up with, these dimensions that this lumber is available in are, are exactly what the design calls for. So. There's really no need for me to mill it. Another consideration is that they're looking for a painted finish. Might do a colored stain, but even then, it's gonna be a finish that really either completely or mostly hides the character of the wood. So not, I'm not really looking at needing to make sure that on the, the doors and stuff that, the, that I you know, match the grains and stuff on the different rails and styles. That's just not really a big concern. This more than satisfies the needs for the project and will save a good bit of time and money for the client. So we still haven't decided on the exact finish yet. Um, they know they want something in sort of a, a deep red, barn red, brick red, something like that. And we've talked about paint options, colored stains. I haven't talked to them about yet about milk paint, but I plan to talk to them about that as well. And I think they may really like that just because of the the from what I gather, what they're looking for, I think the, the quality of the color of a milk paint, and from what I've seen what's available, specifically from general finishes, I think that may be what they're looking for. But as I generate some offcuts, I'm gonna try a couple of different things on some pieces and show that to them and let them decide how they want it to look when it's done. Obviously, it's their project. All right, so beyond that, upcoming projects, and these I mentioned in the last vlog, I still have the, the rustic furniture. I have these old reclaimed beam pieces in my garage that I received from a, a client. When I finish the hutch, I'll present my ideas to him about how I want to turn those into some, some occasional pieces for his lake cabin. And if he's happy with that, I'll be doing that project. Excited about that. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I don't think it'll take a lot of time, but I, um, I think they'll turn out to be pretty interesting looking pieces. And then there's the uh, returning client from last year that wants a new base for a bed to match the storage headboard they have. Um, so that should be fairly straightforward. It's just a storage base with some drawers and it'll be built out of just dimensional two by lumber because that's what the headboard's built out of. So in order to match, that's how it'll be done and, and uh, that should be pretty easy. In terms of just stuff around the shop, my biggest thing that I still, I really want to get done sometime this year is replace this workbench. Talked about in my shop tour video, it just, the dimensions don't work out well. I'd, I'd rather have the, the workbench oriented this in this direction, and but it needs to be narrower to do that. Anyway, my what I think I'd like is a split top Rubo bench from Benchcrafted. Very pricey, but I think it would be an awesome bench that I would use for years. And they do sell plans for it. So I haven't quite decided which way I want to go, but I could either just get the bench from them or buy the plans and build it myself. But that's the way I'm leaning right now. We'll see how that works out. And then I have a number of little storage things and I uh, need to build something for router bit storage and do things like that that I hope to get to in between other bigger projects. 
And then I have still have a couple of videos on my list of things to do that are left over from comments from my shop tour video, specifically my folding outfit ta outfit table. Somebody asked about that and wanted to see a video about how that was built. So I plan to do a video on that. And then another one is, and you probably can't see it with this column in the way, but the, the dust hood on the miter saw, somebody had asked about how that was built. And so I plan to do a video about that, a couple of short videos on those two items. So I think that brings us up to date on kind of what's been going on since the last vlog and where I see the bulk of my time being spent over the next month or two. Thanks for checking in. Uh, be sure to check out the other content on my channel and be looking forward to the next vlog in the next month or two and I'll let you know how things have gone. Take care. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified of new videos. Be sure to check out the description below where I'll have links to my website and social media. There will also be other information and links relevant to this video. Thanks again and see you next time.